We're going to get started. Um, my name is Jake Orlowitz. I'm user Okasi. I run Wiki Blueprint. And one of the things that I have done in the last couple of years since leaving the uh, Wikipedia Library program at the Wikimedia Foundation is continue to work on our citation infrastructure. And um, I am not a developer, but I have ideas about citations. And luckily, I found James Hare, user Hare J. And together, we have been working on a tool called the Citation Watchlist. And we uh, released it to the world um, a couple months ago, and we talked about it at Wikimania. We're going to talk about it talk about it here and we're going to demo it but the cool thing is this time it's going to work um, so i'd like to introduce james uh, he needs no introduction but he's going to tell you all about the tool good afternoon everyone i am james Hare. i am the main developer on the citation watchlist tool i transform jake's vision into working code and so what exactly is this citation watch list? It's, to explain it simply, it's a user script. It's custom JavaScript, but a custom thing you can install in your user account. And it enhances Wikipedia editing by highlighting the unreliable sources in an article. So if a website of a particular domain name is added to an article, you can identify in which revision it is that link has been added. And it works in the watch list, it works in recent changes, it works in history, page history, so the history of individual pages, and the user contributions page. Basically, anywhere where you see a feed of revisions to articles, you can see these indicators pop up whenever a certain kind of source is added to an article. And we use, at the moment, we use this big red exclamation point for warnings, which is the most severe level, and then a, a caution hand for things that are less severe and the idea is to make it easy to find when a problematic source is added to an article and so the the idea the vision is re when reference is that you should be able to track changes to references as easy as you track changes to, to any other changes to any other kind of article and to do so by providing clear visual indicators that pop out immediately and grab your attention and additional information is just to hover away with your mouse cursor. And the benefit of this, as opposed to other tools, is rather than having to use a separate interface to go through articles using some other place, you get to do it directly on Wikipedia. So you don't have to leave Wikipedia, and you get to use the tools you are already using. So there are three different indicator levels. I told you about the red exclamation point warn and the hand caution. The highest level indicates sources that are considered generally reliable as a matter of Wikipedia community consensus. And so the two main forums for noting unreliable sources would be RSP, which is the perennial reliable sources list, and DEPS, which is the deprecated sources list. For something to end up on RSP, the perennial sources list, it has to be a source that the community has debated over and over and over again. And after consensus, it can be marked as a deprecated source, hence the warrant icon. However, an, an outcome that also happens pretty often is no consensus, which is to say it has been debated over and over again, and there are basically arguments for both sides, and there is no agreement. So for that, we put up the caution to indicate this may be a problematic source. And a third category we created, inspect, is more of a neutral designation. This is often used for certain types of web resources that are not themselves clearly one thing or another. For example, if you link to doi.org or archive.org, those are just containers for other things, right? Archive.org hosts anything under the sun. And so the purpose of the inspect indicator is to say, take a closer look. And with all these indicators and with this tool in general, it is up to the editor to exercise discretion in how they use the tool. It, Ultimately, each contributor is responsible for the edits they make with the tool. And so the purpose of this is only to help you to make it more efficient. It can't make the decision for you. So the way it works is that we have these lists of URLs. They are hosted on Wiki. You can edit them on Wiki. If you know how to edit a Wiki page and how to create a bullet point list with section headers, then you know how to update the list and create new ones. And we have these lists of domain names, and the script um, scan, scans individual revisions against these lists. 
The default list is perennial sources and deprecated sources. Those are like the standard Wikipedia community consensus. We have decided these are not very good sources. However, you can also develop new lists. For example, we incorporated a list developed by a predecessor project called Sight Unseen, which does a similar thing, but focuses on the, on the face of the articles themselves and isn't limited to just bad sources, but just general context of what the sources are. And so, yes, the goal is, sorry, I lost my track. Um, Frequently, so yeah, editors can discuss new lists, and so the idea is that if you're interested in a particular part of sourcing, like um, unreliable scientific journals, then you could create a list that's like specialized in that use case. Because a lot of, you know, the perennial sources, the deprecated sources, those really only cover like the very, very, very small number of sources that get subject to that kind of perennial debate. The vast majority of sources are not really debated or documented in any meaningful way. And so if you want to engage in that kind of documentation, you could use the citation watchlist tool for that. And it's just as easy as editing a wiki page. And in the future, we would like to be able to enable and disable certain lists or treat some sources as definitely unreliable instead of maybe unreliable, basically giving users the ability to customize their experience based on the sort of patrolling they want to do. At the moment, it's just universal list and all users get all lists. And um, we have a working prototype on English Wikipedia. Um, it, highlights, it highlights the unreliable sources. It works on those various pages. And what we would like to do for the future is address false negatives, cases where um, a domain does show up on an edit, but we don't flag it. We should be, so we would like to capture that. Uh, we would like to deploy it as a gadget instead of a user script, giving it, making it slightly easier to enable. And we think the ultimate goal is to get this deployed as an extension, perhaps as an enhancement to the recent changes filtering tools that already exist. We would like to add customization. Uh, we would like to have these indicators appear on the article itself instead of just on the revision listing. Uh, we want to add better annotations. Right now, if you hover over the icon, it just gives you a list of domain names. It's very basic. We would like to add more information, more context. And we would also like to make this user script available in other languages. We've set it up to be, I've set it up so that if you want to deploy it to a new language edition of Wikipedia, all you have to do is change some configuration values and hopefully it should just work. So, Today, I get to treat you to a live demo of this tool in action. Live demos are very risky, so I hope you enjoy. So to set up this user script, it's very simple. There is this sort of, hold on, there's this sort of magic incantation you copy, and then you go to special colon my page slash common dot js. This is just your own personal JavaScript. Uh, Wikipedia, for whatever le reason, allows you to run arbitrary JavaScript on their website. Uh, this is completely insane, but it's a thing. Um, but it allows this to exist, and so that's why it's there. And so you simply import the script on your common.js page, you save page, and then it'll load. This slide? Okay. You can also go to, on Wikipedia, wp colon watch site, no spaces, and the instructions are there, wp watch site. All right, let's proceed. Um, So whenever we demo this, we like to go to specifically the recent changes feed for, for recent changes feed with an edit tag of use of deprecated source. And, the, and so you get a recent changes feed with edits that use this deprecated source. The citation watchlist tool is slightly redundant in this context, but it's a good way to test the script because you, because you can expect that every edit or almost every edit will light up. So this is recent, so let's go to recent changes with that filter enabled. And 
as the page is processed, it pops up and pops up and pops up. And so you can see all these indicators showing up next to the revision. Let's, let's pick one to look at. Rome. What's going on on the Rome article? So ex big exclamation point must be a very sketchy source. So let's hover over it. Warning, wikipedia.org. Someone cited Wikipedia on Wikipedia. You can't do that. Let's review the diff. Okay, other religions. Uh, in addition, Rome hosts multiple Buddhists. Okay, that seems like a normal source. And... Yep, there it is. It's, it's okay, that's even worse than I expected. <laughs> Okay, so now I want to go, so now I have a few options here. I can go to the page history here and see if this happens at other points in the article. We could see that that edit highlighted here. Oh, look, more edits, more. People are just adding sketchy stuff left and right to this article. Let's see what's happening here. All right. All right, okay, so web.archive.org, that would fall under inspect because archive.org can contain anything from highly reliable journals and books to the polar opposite of that, that hence the inspect. So yeah, let's see, caution, okay, caution, academia.edu, okay, so that's what it highlighted on. And can we find academia.edu in here? There we go. And so rather than have to manually inspect each individual edit, you could see what edits pop up on that page. And then if you wanted to, you could go to the user contributions page. I apologize to this individual user for calling them out. But then you could see, oh, are they in the practice of adding these kinds of sources to other articles as well? And so with this tool that just simply adds indicators next to revisions, you can track the addition of these types of domain names across Wikipedia. And ideally in the future, we aren't, wouldn't be limited to just domain names, but sources in general, regardless of the kind of source it is. But that's a much longer term project. Thanks, James. Clap it up for James for building that. Um, I, I kind of marvel when something actually works. And what is amazing is that, so we built this tool because there are other great tools built by Novum and Headbomb and Super Hamster that work on the article. I use them, they're highlighters, they tag the article, but there was nothing for all of the around spaces. I don't go to articles to evaluate them, I check my watch list. And it became apparent uh, once we had this working on the watch list that, well, let's do it on recent changes too, because that's a feed. And then, well, you know, it's kind of the same thing as a history page. And then finally, we just added contributions. And now, anywhere you go, you get this functionality. So I am in awe of James for making this work and doing it without hitting the rate limit. Okay, any questions? We're gonna be real conscientious with time. And, uh, but we have seven minutes at least for questions, if you have any. Um, I guess we also could turn it on you and say, would you use this tool? Why aren't you using this tool? Rob? Yeah, I have a... Can you, can you come to the mic, please? Um, yeah, I have a script installed that is somehow making your script not work. I have a script installed that's making your script not work. Can you I, uninstall that script, please? I don't know which script it is. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so maybe I could borrow James later? You can have him. Okay, thank you. Uh, no, this is good. This is why we want to release it into the wild. There's something like um, 20 to 30 active users of this tool right now compared to uh, the citation highlighter has something like 400 we'd like to beat them but no i'm joking it's too low for it, this kind of functionality should be much more integrated and accessible most editors even experienced editors do not edit their common.js file and yet some of these tools are extremely valuable and some of the ways that experienced editors do their magic is because they've got 30 user scripts that 
you know, I remember showing Eric Moeller from back in the day, my screen in 20, I don't know, 14. And he goes, what are you running? And I was like, oh, 16 user scripts. And he's like, I've never seen Wikipedia look like that. And I was like, well, you know, this is how we do it. Uh, he was the CTO back in the day. Uh, Kunal. Um, yeah, this is, this is really cool. I'm wondering if you've given any thought to like, now that like it's being flagged in people's watch lists, do we have a way to like mark and edit as being reviewed? Like either like if you manage to put like the sketchy URL that you know is relevant for whatever exception, is there a way to mark it that like this is actually an okay use of the URL because of whatever reasons so that we like all 15 people are not checking the same link over and over? First of all, thank you for offering to join the development team, Kunal. Um, I really appreciate that. And I'm going to let James take the technical side. I, I really like the idea of coordination between users. Like, for example, you see an edit. Like, for example, you see an edit, you evaluate it, and then you mark it, and then you don't have redundant effort. It's, uh, I think that is a very cool idea. I think it's something of a data storage problem. I'm not quite sure how I would technically implement it, but I'd love to discuss it with you more. Sounds good. Thank you. Go ahead. If um, you have a question, you have to go to the at, mic. At the risk of getting the same feedback that um, Kanal got, um, so I could think of two cool. Okay, I think that works a little better. Um, I could think of two cool things that you could do with this. One is provide some kind of a, a feedback thing so that when it it rates some edit as being unreliable or whatever, you know, a human could say, yeah, I agree that was an unreliable source or no, I disagree. And then, you know, somehow eventually that can get fed back into the system. Um, kind of like um, like a gamified rating system, like where multiple multiple ratings happen over time and we get to see whether or not something is actually being misused or its percentage of reverts kind of thing? No, I was th thinking of a you know, feedback on, this, on the scoring system. So we've got some kind of scoring system right now, which is really just RSN and, and whatever, or depths, which I'm actually not familiar with. Um, it would be good to keep some history of you know, how many times the system has said, this edit looks like an unreliable source, but humans have come along and said, no, you're wrong, this really is reliable. And that'll give us some kind of feedback into how to you know, fine tune the, uh, the rating system. This is really good insight, but I have to kind of admit that this tool has no back end. Um, so I think there's like a piece missing. We don't have the ability to record or track anything. Um, we are a layer on top of the interface, but I like, I like this vision of starting to aggregate our ratings insights about sources. I think it's a very, very good idea, and I'll let James answer better. No, I generally agree. This is a, a much this is a much bigger, I think there's a much bigger vision here than just the, um, just the ability to annotate and highlight edits, right? And, and so I think it's worth thinking about what we want the bigger version of this to look like. Like what would, what would source evaluation at scale look like considering there are so many different kinds of sources in so many different contexts? Okay, the other thing that I could think that would be cool is, um, kind of along the same line of keeping track of, you know, are there particular editors who chronically add unreliable sources um, to articles? And then once we had that information, I'm, I'm sure we could think of useful things to do with that information once we had it. You know what, I, I actually am scared by that idea. And I think we have to be careful about what we are suggesting about what this tool can provide. Um, Again, at the moment, this is a layer. It is not uh, necessarily even correct. So there might be someone who constantly adds links to Twitter in a perfectly appropriate way. And we are not in a position to evaluate whether or not editors are using or misusing sources. It requires direct inspection. That's the model for any semi-automated or machine-automated review interface. We do not have the precision to punish based on these evaluations. So I'm, I'm hesitant to go there yet. Um, question? Yeah. Does it or does it have any, or are there any plans to have it support some of the older skins? I've never managed to move off of Monobook. <laughs> um, I will take a look at testing it on Monobook and figuring out how I should adapt it for that. I think 
the HTML elements, they should use the same names. Um, so I will test on MonoBook and see what changes I have to make. Thank you. Any other questions? Otherwise, we're going to just warmly say goodbye. And you should install the script and use it and test it and break it. And then James will fix it. And Kunal will help him. Thank you so much.